Okay, so welcome everybody to the Amherst Community Chat for Thursday, January 21st. Uh, today we have Public Health Director Emma Dragon and Director of Senior Services Mary Beth Ogalowitz joining uh, myself and your town manager Paul Bachelman to um, talk a little bit today about the vaccine and to be able to answer uh, your questions live in the room. So we do see that we have a fair bit of um, attendees here today. So thank you for joining us. Just a quick um, reminder about how you can ask your questions. You can post your questions directly into the Q&A function within Zoom. You can raise your hand within Zoom and we will invite you into the room. And if you're joining from the phone, you can press star nine to raise your hand. So um, we typically give Paul a moment or two to give any, any updates before we hear from our guests. Thanks, Brianna. So yeah, I'm going to be very quick because I know there's lots of questions and lots of material we want to cover today. Um, just um, it's a new day in our in our community. Everybody's very excited. It's snowing outside. Um, we've we've in the new day it means that we've also started to administer the vaccine to first responders and and core health core healthcare workers. So it's always always good news. So um, I'm interested to hear from Mary Beth and Emma about. What's next? What's the next phase? Tell, tell us more. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Paul. So before we get to Q&A, um, just for anybody who um, is not familiar with our special guest today, I want to give both Mary Beth and Emma a chance to um, introduce themselves and a quick report out on uh, where things stand with their, with their respective departments. So uh, Mary Beth, you're in my top left. So why don't you go ahead? Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, the number one question and issue on everybody's mind, of course, is the vaccines. And so we do have Emma here that she'll be providing some more detailed information. Um, it's not our turn yet, but we are really close to being in phase two. And that's when seniors will be administered the vaccine in larger numbers. At this point in time, it's been uh, administered to individuals who have been in long-term care, assisted living facilities, and also in congregate care settings. So those are uh, the seniors that we've been able to uh, progress through in terms of the stages within phase one. But our turn is coming up soon and we are readying and preparing for that. We'll go through some more details about how we're going to be an important partner to communicate with you information and also resolve any issues in terms of being able to sign up or access those vaccine sites that will be set up and standing at that time. We're looking forward to supporting all of you and working with partners to do that. And then secondly, the uh, second big issue, taxes. We are running the AARP free tax service. Call me on February 1st to schedule an appointment. It will be at the Hadley Senior Center and it will be curbside and I can give you more details. So February 1, call me for taxes. Thanks. Thank you, Mary Beth. Emma. Yeah, so uh, we've been busy bees, if you want to call it that, over here at the health department. Um, we were doing testing uh, last month, and now we have pivoted to starting our vaccine distribution. We set up a site working collaboratively with our fire department and our first responders and our police department as well and our emergency manager, um, not just locally, but regionally as well to get that site stowed up. Um, I can't say enough about that in terms of how we were able to work together to make it successful. Um, we set up here at the bank center and we were able to administer just shy of 550 vaccines last week alone. Um, which is incredible work. And we are continuing to look forward with continuing the vaccine distribution and, and what the expanded rollout will be. So we're just really all thinking about that. Um, like Mary Beth said, the technology challenges that I know I'm probably not alone in sometimes and, and just really trying to think about problem solving now. Um, so that way we can be able to have everybody sign up for those vaccines and be able to get it if, if they want to come. Great. Thank you, Emma. So again, I'll remind folks who just joined, please use Q&A and or raise your hand in Zoom to ask your questions live. We have a ton of questions that have been sent in uh, that we've received via email and phone over the last week or so since um, um, the vaccine clinic started. Uh, we've had a lot of calls, a lot of emails. So we know people are interested and have questions. So I'm going to start with some of those and then I will uh, monitor the room for, for your questions live. First question, uh, when will the vaccine be available for seniors? 
Yeah, so uh, that'll be in what Massachusetts is determining to be the start of phase two distribution. That is estimated to be the first week of February. Uh, certainly that is, an, is a goal, um, but not a set date at this time. Uh, as more information becomes available, we will be sure to distribute that in, in a number of different modalities that I know Brianna does so well for our town as well as languages as well to meet our community. Um, and then I believe Mary Beth has some ways too that she communicates with her specific um, community members. Uh, and, and so phase two will be coming uh, and more, I'm sure as the new day, like Paul said today, um, more to come as the new administration is here. And Mary Beth, do you have a little bit more to say about your specific, uh, you know, your audience, the, the seniors that you work with? One, one question we had was, um, this person's mother is 92 and she doesn't live in the area and she, she doesn't read the paper or watch TV. How will she know when there is a vaccine clinic? How, how will we get that information out to, to seniors? Yeah, we've received a number of those phone calls and inquiries, particularly from older adult children who are concerned about their family member here. And I want to assure everybody that we will be using all of our communication channels. One of the important ways that we do communicate with seniors and we found most effective, particularly when we closed down for COVID, was we used uh, what we call a robocall. So we have uh, seniors who come here to the senior center in our database. And I have the ability to place uh, an automated phone call, which will provide information. So though we have a robust uh, database, We've asked individuals and we're making it available. We've posted it on Facebook. It's also going to be in our newsletter, which is being mailed out this week. We have a dedicated phone line and that phone number is 413-259-3038. And again, 259-3038. And folks can call that phone number and leave their name, their phone number and their address and date of birth and we will be able to use that information and we'll enter it into our database and we will make sure that we place calls to you so that you're informed of that. And we found that individuals who don't have technology aren't reading or, or uh, newspapers any longer. That's really an effective way. But we will be using all our channels and our partners uh, that are in the community. Great, and thank you. You know, one question that comes up with most of our information that goes out, but specifically for alerting about the vaccine clinic of the next phases is, will we have this information available in multiple languages for seniors to read? Either of you. Yeah, I know that is definitely a priority for us and, and we're looking forward to being able to do that in different ways. Mary Beth, do you have more? Well, I do. Uh, one of the, the great benefits of having been in this job for now about 18 months is that we've made some great inroads uh, with community uh, allies in various uh, language communities. And so I've been in contact with a number of them of late preparing sort of the, the process for them to communicate because what we have found in those individual language populations is that there's typically several individuals who act as community leaders and are very effective at spreading the word within their own language. And so I've been preparing uh, those kind of segues um, in anticipation of this, because that's the only advantage of being probably a bit later for this jurisdiction is reading what's happening in other jurisdictions. Uh, those who are not speakers of English language have sort of been left out of the loop a bit. So we're anticipating that and uh, using our strategic partners for that. We just got a, a question in from the, the room. Paul, did you have something to say first? No, I can wait and do the question first. Okay, so Linda asks, will there be a way to pre-register for an appointment? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the primary rollout of the vaccine is actually an appointment is required uh, for our vaccine clinics. Uh, so no real drop-ins uh, with that we are using a, a web-based platform uh, supplied to local boards of health and local health departments from the state called PrepMod. So there is a pre-registration and an appointment that you select and you input your demographics uh, into that as well. With that being said, like I know Mary Beth and I have uh, both identified, sometimes people aren't tech savvy. So we are 
plan in the planning phases now to be able to help those that are in need for assistance with setting up those appointments online. Uh, so that way we'll be able to meet everybody in our community where they're at and make sure anyone who wants to be able to get enrolled as long as we have a, a availability uh, with appointments and vaccine of, uh, here in, in the health department that we can really plug those people in as we're able to. Yeah, and I think we used uh, PrepMod um, for the first responders, and that worked mm -hmm. out pretty well. And it helps manage the line. So if you have a slot at say twelve fifteen, you come and there's you're in a group of twenty or twenty five people, so you're not queued up for hours on end uh, like it was in other. It is can be in other locations, so it's a good way to to manage the line as well. And again, well, I just would like to add and reassure everybody that if uh, it is a technology based sign up process that we will be available. And again, I've been reaching out to partners to help us uh, for individuals who don't have access or are not uh, tech savvy. So we wanna make sure that people know that if they need the support, we're gonna make sure that you have the support to get that appointment. We've been performing that role for the UMass testing. So I and my staff have been enrolling people for the COVID testing and supporting them in that process as well. So, but we have a number of partners who are prepared to help us as well. So I've got a couple of questions in the Q&A that I'm going to go to, and then I do see Elizabeth's hand in the room, so I will um, take them in order. So this is actually a good clarifying question from uh, Lucia or Licia. Does senior mean over 75 years old or over 65 years old? So the state of Massachusetts uh, altered recently or adjusted the rollout uh, to include 65 and over uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe even last week, who knows, the days rolled together. So 65 and older now can as well be included in phase two. But once again, for any updates, because the rollout is consistently uh, routinely changing and being updated, go to that mass.gov website, front slash COVID-19 and there's the updates there. Great, thank you. And I'll just make a mention too that we, we linked to that from our COVID page, um, our vaccine page too, if, if you've been there, um, the links to the, the site Emma just mentioned are there. Okay, so I see um, Elizabeth was next. So Elizabeth, I am gonna pull you into the room. Please unmute and introduce yourself, please. Okay, thank you. I am Elizabeth Phillips. Uh, I am in that plus 75 group and I'm, I am tech savvy, uh, Emma, but what you just said, there was a, a place where we can register for an appointment, but I missed, did you give the site for that? I mean, I would like to go do that right now, but. Oh, that's a great question, Elizabeth. So the signups are only available right now. They're only open for the phase one vaccine distribution. As soon as there are signups available and appointments for that phase two distribution, and we're gonna go into that at the beginning of February, we will make sure that it's out to the public and, and, and in a various different number of forums. Um, and Brianna's great with helping with that. So that way that sign up when the time comes, you'll be sure to know. You can't okay. sign up now if you want it to. I yeah. cannot. You cannot. Okay. And I, you will let me know somehow. <laughs> That's can. right. Yeah. And Elizabeth, if you, if you want to get the hot off the presses communication, you can also call us at 259-3038 and leave me your name and phone number. And then we will be sending the robocall when Emma gives us the green light that the seniors are open and available and you will receive an automated phone call from me to your home to tell you, here's the link and here's the information to sign up, okay? Okay, thank you, Mary Beth. I'm hoping it's soon. <laughs> yeah, I know, we I'm, all are. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Okay. And stay safe in the meantime, right? Masks and socially distance. Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> thank thank you. you, Elizabeth. Thank you for your question. Um, and just to Elizabeth's point and, and, and Emma and Mary Beth, I think we're going to be putting it out there every way. I, I don't think we have carrier pigeons yet, but um, other than that, we're going to be putting it everywhere. So um, hopefully nobody will miss that. 
So I have a couple questions in the Q&A. Um, this is a great question that I've heard a couple of times now. Uh, Bernadette asks her, or mentions her doctor's office, says they will get the vaccine. Should I wait for that vaccine instead of registering with the town? What should she do? Mm. I would encourage people to get the vaccine however they are feeling is right for them. I think that's going to be an individual assessment, uh, whether people are more comfortable going to their primary care providers or maybe a pharmacy, if that's also an option, or coming to us as an in-person clinic. Uh, so I really, I don't necessarily want to give a, a, a one answer fits all here, um, but I know that for some people getting it sooner than later is of most important. So if that is a factor for someone, if we are able to fit you in sooner than your primary care provider and, and that's your decision maker, then we will be happy to have you. Great, thank so you. Another, okay. So you would say if, if, if you can get it through your physician, do that first, if it's whichever comes up first, yes. take advantage. Yeah. yeah, thank you for clarifying that, mm -hmm. Paul. I tend to get wordy. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> All right, now we have a question. Um, oh, actually, I see her hand raised. So I'm gonna welcome Hilda into the room. Hilda, if you could unmute and Yeah, introduce. I came in late, Brianna, because I just read it in the paper now that you, you were talking about this. So from what I've just heard, am I required to go sign up with the senior center in order to get the alert or will it go out to everybody? I think, I think that, that there are going to be a number of ways we're going to communicate, Hilda. The one thing that I can say that in my role as the director of senior services is we will send an automated phone call to anybody who signs up with us to tell you that it is uh, your time now to register for the vaccine. But you might also, the, the town has an alert system as well. There, we will also be uh, sharing that information through typical media sources. It will be in the Gazette. It will probably be on the large signs in town. Um, so, so I think that there's a good possibility you will learn of its opening up through a number of channels. So my but channel I that I shared is just one and I'm happy to serve in that way if you'd like to call. And so it's better if I call you at you said 3038? Yes, 3038. Call you with 30 and leave the message. That's the best thing to do. Yep, and I will send you a call. Okay, thank you. So You're you've welcome. answered my question. Yeah. Shall I, is the rest of it going to be about this, or shall I just hang in or hang up? Hang in. Come hang on, in there, Hilda. Hilda. We're always happy to have <laughs> you. <laughs> what? Hang it. Hang in there. We're going to talk. There's a little bit more questions that you might find relevant, but you're okay, welcome. Okay, I have a class at 12:30, so I'll hang in there till the other goes. I have to write down 3038 before I forget. Okay, thanks, Hilda. I mean, it, it is kind of confusing because you often will hear, "Oh, I heard so and so, my friend so and so got vaccinated in New York," or "I got I, rules are different in other states," or "So and so got got a vaccine in a different community." And it could be that they you know, are living in a, a different kind of housing complex where they've already done it, contracted for it. So I think what's going to be confusing for a lot of people is that they're going to hear different things from different people. And we have to keep um, helping people understand what's the what's the reality in our community at this point. And and we're following the state's guidelines. So whatever it is, the state says we are following that. So, I, I mean, I think that is confusing to people because I hear it from other folks, too, is that oh, I had a friend and they got the vaccine, how'd they get it? And you don't know their individual circumstance and why can't I get it? But it, it, we all feel the anxiety of, I want to get the vaccine as soon as we can, as, as soon as it's available, you know? You must be feeling see, feeling that a lot, Mary Beth, right? Yeah, and, and I guess, you know, one of the things that I was going to uh, hop off of your thread, Paul, is that there are things that you can do in the meantime while you're waiting for that green light to be able to register and get the vaccine. So for many people, they do uh, have a peace of mind through monitoring the media. And that when you talk about the multiple sources, as Emma has already mentioned, if you go to mass.gov and then when can I get the vaccine, you will get the updated information. And I keep telling people that is the reliable source and that's the source through which the town is reliant on about what stage in the phase is eligible for a vaccine. So 
there are a lot of pernicious rumors out there. I've had seniors showing up in parking lots saying that there's some secret list or that, you know, there's extra files at the end of the day. And we really wanted to discourage that um, because it, it's just led to greater anxiety. But there mm -hmm. are meaningful things you can do. You can you can monitor the website for the updated information and it gets updated on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can continue to practice those good social distancing skills, the mask wearing, washing your hands, and you can also get COVID testing at UMass. So, uh, you know, that's quick, it's easy, it provides a peace of mind for any of you if you're having to feel like you're waiting extra time, and we can always help you to sign up um, so that you could go to UMass Community COVID Testing. Um, but it's a great it's a great opportunity to just make sure that you feel good that that you don't have COVID. This, my staff goes weekly. Uh, every week, I always feel like victory when I get my negative. Um, so I, I know it does give that peace of mind. So there are things we can do while we're waiting, um, and it feels like a bit of an anxious time. And everybody wants to hop the line. I get that. Um, but our time is coming really soon, really quickly, and it will be a well thought out plan. Yeah, but one um, caveat on the testing. So mm -hmm. UMass after this week is shutting down the community testing for a week because they're gonna be welcoming students in. Mm -hmm. And so you can't really sign up for testing at this moment in time. That This is the UMass testing, not the vaccine. So the testing, and um, they're gonna reopen it on uh, February 2nd, I think, uh, when you'll be able to go get testing. It'll be a test, testing availability on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays because they're requiring all the students to get tested mm -hmm. when they come back and then quarantine for four days and then get a second test. And they need their entire capacity to handle the students coming back, so. I was just about to mention that, Paul, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And if anybody's interested in what the site looks like, I have a video on my Facebook page, the Town of Amherst Senior Center, where I went there and uh, you can see the layout, um, the signage, the COVID ambassadors. So it's, it's really well thought out. Um, and I've had a number of seniors who saw the video and signed up for testing this week. So. Good. Yeah. That's and great. I saw you down there la last week. Yes, I did. I saw you in line. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I have to say that I've been getting tested there weekly as well, and it's just been such a smooth, so easy, smooth process. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So this is another good question um, that we've got uh, previously sent to us. Someone who can't physically leave their house to get the vaccine. How will, how will they get the vaccine? Will a nurse come to their home? Um, any advice around that scenario? So I know that uh, there are a number of different conversations going around right now trying to strategize around that, including Cooley Dickinson Healthcare, uh, the visiting nurses program there, as well as us on the community level. So I don't think there's a specific solution just yet, but I know that many of us in, in the health specialty are thinking about that because certainly we don't want them to be missed. Um, so more to come with that. And certainly when there's a plan, I think there might not just be one plan, but there might be a number of different strategies and solutions that people could be accessed from. And, then, and from the senior perspective, um, our organizations and groups of for advocacy have been lobbying around this from the get-go because we understood the unique considerations with regard to vulnerability and frailty that would be part and parcel of this effort to vaccinate large numbers of people. So I can tell you that the Executive Office of Elder Affairs is involved in this discussion of the Massachusetts Councils on Aging. We've had a number of meetings and I've also spoken with Rep Representative Dom who's been in communication with the Secretary of Health and Human Services around the unique issues and, and making sure that they are all aware of it and making some intentional plans. So more to follow. Great. All right, so we are getting close to um, our 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna take this opportunity to prompt the room again, any of our live attendees, which I see many of you, um, feel free to use this time now to ask your question, Q&A function or raise your hand in Zoom, star nine from the phone. And um, I will mention this is being recorded. Uh, we will post it as soon as possible in case you wanna share it with any family, friends or neighbors. Um, and I will take a quick chance. Oh, here's a, here's a question coming into the room. Ah, thank you for all the information from uh, Ludmilla. Thank you for joining us. Is this our biggest turnout, Brianna? Um, I, I don't 
think it's the biggest, but it's it's definitely up there for live attendance. So yeah. um, it, it just goes to show that this issue is really uh, timely and topical, important to everybody. Um, let's see, do we have another question in the room? Not at the moment. Um, I will take a, a quick second to, to say that um, Emma, Paul, and myself, as well as some um, local clinicians and doctors will be working to set up a, an info session um, that will be specifically on the vaccine. And, and hopefully we'll have more information by the time uh, in the first week of February. We don't have the date yet, but we will release it um, through all of our regular channels that you've probably even heard about this meeting for. So just keep that in mind that we are um, setting up a specific session for vaccines as well. So I do see um, the phone number that ends in 9379 with their with their hand. So I have invited you into the room. Please unmute and introduce yourself. And to un, yeah, there you go. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Um, my question relates to the number that was given 2593038 to get on the robocall list. Is that exclusively for Amherst residents or is it available for other towns? No, you can, you can sign up as well. The, the uh, senior services here uh, routinely services what we call the Amherst area. Uh, over 26% of our individuals who have come for classes are from out of town. So you can provide your name and number and we will certainly include you. Okay, relative to the rollout for people 75 and above, the state website says that people 75 and above will be in phase two, step one. Mm -hmm. whereas uh, others 65 and older will be later on down phase two. Is that still your understanding? Yep, that's still the understanding. Thank you for the, those extra details there. Um, and I know that every day the state of Massachusetts is evaluating the vaccine rollout. Um, so like Mary Beth said earlier with the going to the mass.gov when can I get the COVID vaccine? Checking that website Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, for those updates. Um, just keep looking back frequently and often. Yeah, I found that to be pretty useful. Um, UMass, the UMass website has a, a way to register for the vaccine. How is that different from the prep mode? Or I, could, I didn't quite get the wording that you indicated that your website was called. Yeah, so the website is actually for the state is um, I am MA immunizations.org, uh, but we have our own link on our town website and that you can search for public clinics. However, I want to uh, ask everyone to pause and, and be patient and wait for the phase two distribution to start because there aren't any signups right now available for phase two vaccine signups. Um, so the UMass site, they're just using a different technology platform for their documentation and their signups unique to them outside of the state. So, but most of us on the local level are using that maimmunizations.org site. Okay, thank you very much. It's been, been very helpful. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. No problem. All right. So we are down to our, our last minute. Um, it, of course, we we happy to go uh, more if there's some more live questions from the room. And while I give that prompt, um, I want to be able to give a chance for both Emma and Mary Beth to kind of leave us with a call to action or some information that they feel is important to share that they haven't been asked yet. So why don't you start, Emma? Yeah, I just, I, I'm so excited for all the work that we've already done in, in my two months that I've been in this role. Um, it's a very exciting time to be in public health. And, and I just really wanna thank everybody for their enthusiasm with the vaccine, all of their, um, just how everybody is reaching out and being supportive at this moment. And, and we're happy to do the work. Thank you, Emma. Mary Beth? I wanna give a call out to what I call her as super dragon. So, you know, if people knew what it took to stand up a vaccine clinic, you would be nothing less than erecting a statue to her in the center of town. It has been phenomenal to watch the town, the emergency management team come together, 
can pull this off. Uh, being here in Bang Center, I, I just stand in deep admiration and respect and regard for her skillfulness in putting this together uh, in a moment's notice. So, so really, the, the town is, is so fortunate to have Emma here. Um, and so I, I just want to make sure that, that she receives that uh, as someone who's watched the whole thing from scratch come to, uh, to live. And then here is my challenge to you all. So we talk about a new day. Well, I wanna challenge all of you to, to stand up and to rise up. And what that really means is we have a campaign in Massachusetts called Reach Out MA. So it's hashtag Reach Out MA. And what the basic premise is, is to reach out to a senior citizen. So we can sit here all day and talk about all kinds of formal systems that Emma's trying to, to work and channels and organizations. But what we know is that the true strength of any community is how we care for one another. And I challenge every resident in the town of Amherst to make a contact with a senior. We all must know at least one senior. Check in on them and not just once, but check in on them periodically and particularly around the vaccine. If you hear that the vaccine is available, check in with your senior, ask them, do you need support? Do you need help? Do you need a ride? How can I help you? Do you need some assistance um, in signing up? Because when we help one another, that's when we are at our best and our strongest. And I think that we have 5,173 seniors in this community. So those are those individuals identified as age 60 and older, and we've got to get them vaccined in a hurry. And so I'm asking for everybody's support and challenging people to just reach out through kindness and compassion. Just one person is what I'm asking for. That's great, Mary Beth. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. She's dropping the mic now. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, we did get one last question come into the, the Q&A before I let Paul um, have, his, have his last say. When will our teachers be vaccinated? If anybody wants to grab that before we wrap. Yeah, teachers are included in phase two distribution of vaccines. So they will be included at, right at that next phase at the beginning of February with the mass rollout. Great, thanks Emma. Um, again, you can find all, all of this information or links to this information from our COVID uh, vaccine page, amherstcovid19.org slash vaccine. Um, Paul, did you have anything you wanted to say? Yeah, just to build on what Mary Beth said. Um, well, first, challenge accepted, Mary Beth, and then um, in terms of Emma working, what was what was gratifying to me at the uh, at the site was seeing our paramedics, our firefighters um, working with our school nurses and with our health under the leadership of our health director, and then even had the uh, police department with their the COVID amb uh, ambassadors there helping to educate, you know, help people get know where they, if they're in the right place or not and in advance so it was a real team effort and you know we had a meeting this morning about getting ready for the next phase and where we are you just so you know that everybody's on board you have a really strong team and leadership of the um town and we're working on getting everything lined up so when that when that vaccine is released and that's sort of the limiting factor right now we don't have the vaccine if we had it it's going into people's arms that's what our mission is um and so when, when that comes available, we're ready to go. Great, that's a, that's a great wrap up, Paul. I appreciate you tying all those things together. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. We will um, put the information out there for our info session on vaccines, first week of February. We'll share that widely and feel free, like you said, to share this with a senior um, and reach out. Thank you Thanks, all. Brianna.